Life by Divine with Sue DeMay fosters deep healing and profound awakenings as she guides you to hear, answer, and trust the highest calling of your heart. Your host and sacred guide is global impact visionary leader Sue DeMay, a best-selling author, international speaker, and gifted intuitive healer who challenges all of us to shift from life by default or even life by design to truly living life by divine. And now, here is Sue DeMay. Welcome to the show. It's an honor to be here once again with you, sharing my heart, sharing the message that comes through from the divine into your life to meet you in your humanness and remind you of your divinity. Today is, it's one of those days I just, I really am going moment to moment. And for the most part, I live moment to moment. And generally with the radio show, I get a topic and a description, usually the day before or a couple days before, or at least the morning of. This morning, I've received nothing. And I feel very calm around that. Give it, you know, a year, even five, ten years ago, that would have caused some anxiety, some stress. But I really come to trust my ability to channel the message that's meant to be shared. So I have, I'm really walking with deep trust and blind faith when it comes to all aspects of my life, particularly what's going to come out of my mouth when I'm doing my work. So I'm not sure what the topic will be today, but I do know that whatever message comes through is going to be the message that those that are listening most need to hear and those that are meant to listen most need to hear. So whether you're listening live or tuning into the podcast afterwards when tuning into the replay, just know that there is a gift somewhere in this message today. There is something that you're meant to hear, something you're meant to receive, and then something you're meant to bring into your life and integrate. I always encourage everyone to take what resonates and leave the rest behind. But today I'm also going to encourage you, take what resonates and pay attention to what triggers you. Pay attention to what you resist hearing. Pay attention to the moments where the ego is trying to distract you and take you away from my voice and away from the message and trying to get you to focus on something else. The ego loves to use distraction tactics. And resistance is one of those signals that there's something we need to look at, heal, experience, feel, or know. So when we can use resistance as a signal or a friend pointing to something, then we can actually get in underneath and break up some of those patterns that we tend to repeat over and over again. So today you're listening for what resonates, what creates a little pang or knowing or a deep resonance in your heart, And you're also listening for resistance and tuning into resistance. It's almost like you're going along and all of a sudden your ears are in, your fingers are in your ears and you're like, la, 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 I can't hear you. I don't know what you're saying. It's the ego stopping you from receiving the message you're meant to hear. Remember the ego's main focus is to keep you safe, protected, and keep you from taking risks. It wants you to play small. It wants you to play safe because it wants to protect you. It's afraid. It's afraid for you. It only knows fear. The ego only knows fear. When we are in alignment with the ego, we are in alignment with fear. When we are letting fear animate us in our humanness to lead us and direct us, then we're basically looking upon the world with fear. We are adding and sprinkling fear to an already fear-ridden world, and fear expands. When you can be aware of how the ego is influencing you in that moment with fear, then you can make a conscious choice for love. You can shift from fear back into love. You can make a choice to look through the lens of fear or look through the lens of love. You can make a choice to allow ego to lead the way or your heart to guide you and spirit to direct you. 
So in every moment, we are choosing consciously or subconsciously. We're choosing love or fear. And we can go even further than that. And instead of teaching kind of the experience of duality, which we often will do because when we meet people in, in our humanness, we need to teach it at the level of understanding of the mind so that they can let go of the ego and the objections and the limitations of the mind. It's, a, it's an opening in the mind sometimes when we can teach it in a way that the mind understands, which is duality, because that's what the ego has taught us is duality. We're separate from everything and everyone. And spirit teaches us oneness and it helps us remember our, the truth is, is oneness. So when we meet people in the mind at the level of consciousness they're operating at and create a level of understanding at that mindset or mental body, then we can start to open the mind more. We can start to unravel, undo, unschool, unlearn, unprogram. So the idea of love and fear in every moment, that's a teaching in, in the concept with using duality. Another way to look at that, and it, it talks about it in A Course in Miracles, it talks about love and fear, but it also talks about there are, there's only a love and a call for love. So that's another way to teach love or fear. It's love or a call for love. So fear is actually translated into a call for love. And I really appreciate that teaching because it's not such a teaching that's founded in duality, but it's also a teaching that opens up space for empathy, compassion, and understanding. So we open up the mind again to another perspective a greater depth of understanding, which creates an opening for another perspective, a deeper truth, a truth that goes beyond the human programming and limited mind. So in every moment, we make a choice, consciously or subconsciously, for love. We are either choosing love or we're calling for love. that call for love, we can witness in others. And when we can witness it as a call for love, that call for love may look like anger. It may look like violence. It may look like hatred. It may look like deceit. That call for love in our human perspective can be translated in many different ways. We can see examples of it in many different forms. But when we translate it in our mind as love or fear, instead of, well, there's an example of love and then there's an example of anger and violence and hatred. If we actually translate it to, there's an example of love and then there's an example of fear, which happens to look like anger, hatred, and violence we can meet it with a level of understanding. And then if we actually shift that instead of love and fear, and we go, okay, there's an example of love, and then here is an example of a call for love, which happens to look like anger, violence, and hatred. Then we can start to get behind the motivation behind the behavior. So what's actually driving that person's hatred, violence, anger? What's actually driving the behavior? Because under anger, under violence, under rage, is fear. which translates into a call for love. So when people are in that lower vibrational, lower vibrational 
emotional scale, fear, helplessness, hopelessness, defeat, depression. We'll often use projection to feel more empowered. So a lot of times people, when they're in that powerless, helpless, hopeless state, they will use projection. And projection can be projected anger towards somebody, projected blame, projecting shame. It can often show up in those more with perception of violent ways. So when we look at a narcissist, their inability to process their own shame leads to the narcissistic behavior. Their inability to experience empathy is fed by their inability to process their own shame. And that is a call for love. Now, how we answer that call is basically based on what's guided. So there's times where you're going to meet people with their projections, with their anger, with their rage, with their hatred. And you can stand in fierce love. And fierce love is not a fighting love, but a stand strong in love like a hold steady kind of love, like what you're doing is not okay kind of love, a solid boundary, a strong no. Those are choices for love. So when people are calling for love, it doesn't necessarily mean we let them walk all over us. It doesn't mean that we let their behaviors slide. We can still stand up and say, no, not in my house, not on my watch, not in my life. That's a choice for love. Those that are on the receiving end, those that are trying to project and throw their unresolved pain and trauma onto others in an, in an attempt to feel better, you taking it on is actually not a choice for love. That's a choice for fear. That's caretaking. That's people pleasing. That's trying to help them in a way that's actually not serving. So we can witness people's behaviors, but it doesn't mean we tolerate it. We can accept that people are coming from a place of fear or they're calling for love. We can accept that their behavior is driven by their inability to process their own pain and wounds. And at the same time, we can stand and hold steady in love. And that might look like no. And that may sound like what you're doing is not okay. And that may look like taking a stand. And it may appear in the human world that we're standing up against someone, but really what we're doing is we're standing up for love and answering their call for love. So it's just tweaking the perspective slightly or big time, depending on which perspective you're holding around situations in your life, around challenges in your life, around situations that you're observing, whether it's directly influencing your life or indirectly. We can look upon everything with a different lens and start to recognize and witness the acts of love, the choices for love, and the call for love. And in the beginning, it might be easier for you to recognize, okay, that's love and that's fear. And that's one of the teachings that in Heart Led Living, in my book, The Ten Principles That Shift Consciousness from Head to Heart, Heart Led Living is all based on ten principles. And one of those principles is choose love. So in that book, I talk about 
a choice for love or fear. And at the level of the mind, that's a good introduction to the idea of love and fear. So start there if you haven't practiced this principle before, if you haven't brought this into your life before. Start with that principle. In every moment, you're choosing love or fear. And in every moment, tune in and check in and ask, am I choosing love or fear? Where is this coming from? This is a choice for love. Okay. Beautiful. Celebrate the miracle. And if it's a choice for fear, don't add judgment because that's more fear. Recognize it as a choice for fear. And then go within and choose again. What would love say? What would love do? Ask your inner spirit to direct you, to guide you. Surrender and forgive it all over to the divine and say, I don't know how to choose anything other than fear in this moment. Show me another way. It's in that moment of surrender and forgiveness, forgiving it all over, that we can open up our minds for another perspective. We can open up our lives for another choice. So in the beginning, work with the duality, love or fear, the opposite. Work with it. Use it. Because the mind understands it. The mind gets that. The mind is very comfortable with that. It's very programmed to understand duality. So we work with the human mind at that level so that we can start to slowly integrate a new understanding, a new teaching, a new perspective, a new way of being. And that requires a curious mindset, a willingness, an openness, awareness. an observing mind, so you can have space to observe without judgment. So in the beginning, use that love or fear because it's easier. Then you can shift to the idea of, okay, recognize the fear. Now show me the call for love because it's easy to see the fear. It's easy to see the rage, the hatred, the anger, the frustration, the judgment, it's easy to witness that. Then the depth comes, the next level, creating a deeper level of awareness or, or a broader perspective is to then ask, okay, show me the call for love in this, in this situation, show me the call for love. And the, the question then comes is like, are you actually to answer that call? Are you the one that's meant to say something or do something? Or are you meant to stand back and be witness and there's maybe someone else that's meant to answer that call for love? So it's essential that we don't intervene unless guided. Because each time we intervene, with fear as our motivator, with ego as our teacher, we're actually adding more fear. We're expanding fear. So it's really more about, am I guided to say or do anything at this time? And if you don't get anything, then don't do anything. And a lot of people, especially when you talk about the ego kind of hijacking love and disguising itself as caring, disguising itself as, as the language of love or spirituality itself, the ego loves to hijack things and have these disguises. People pleasing is one of those personas of the ego. Caring. worrying about others. Those are ego personas. Those are ego personality traits that are founded in fear and appear to be loving. Remember when I was kind of unraveling from caring, I, I, I use the words, when you care too much, it hurts. If, if it's genuine caring 
coming from the divine place within you, coming from your heart. There is no fear. Therefore, there will be no pain and suffering. So caring shouldn't hurt. Now we can have human emotions connected to caring. We can have those feelings of grief or empathy and feeling of sadness. Those are human emotions. But we can process those human emotions without getting caught up in them, without feeling like they're, they're sticky points. And you can be in alignment with spirit and feel sad. You can be in alignment with spirit and be in an expression of grief. To have that release of emotional energy. So when we're witnessing those things in our lives and we feel like there's a real pang, like a caring feels like it hurts, then it's probably bumping up against something within us, probably bumping up against the leftover. So the question then becomes, what do I need to see, feel, know, and experience in order to heal? So we kind of meet ourselves in our own humanness, meet our own human emotions, Meet it with love and compassion. Give some space, allow some space for those emotions to be expressed, to be felt, to be released. Remember there was a period of time where I used to, I used to get these moments where I want to quit, that quit everything, quit life, quit. And I would often call up one of my, my friends and soul sister and say, you know, I, I quit. I'm done. I'm quit my life. I'm going to go and move and live in a hut in Africa somewhere, like just totally in the middle of nowhere. That was kind of my go-to. And it was in those moments of overwhelm or uncertainty or confusion or fear that I just needed to give myself permission to, to, to quit. To feel the depth of that layer and give myself permission. And I would often say, I, I wanna get off this ride, like let me off this ride. I've had enough of this ride. And more recently, especially going through this experience I've had in the last six months, I've been kind of alluding and sharing with it. I'm not gonna go into it. It's kind of come to a head, it's over. There's a lot of changes that are gonna be happening in my life, which is actually quite exciting and uh, I'm feeling a great relief and, and gratitude for coming out the other side of all of this. However, there's uh, some things I just need to kind of complete around still. But I feel like there's this space suddenly and then I've, I've, I've been running this marathon for six months. It feels like I've been running a marathon full on, full on straight for six months and I'm just recovering. I need to give myself some time to recover and integrate. I can definitely feel my body is kind of recovering from the adrenaline and the stress hormones and everything else that this experience created. Because it was constant. It, it was constant. And it's one of those things I keep saying to people. I'm like, if I told you a quarter of what happened, you, it would be so unbelievable that you would think I'm making it up. And and that's even just a quarter. And there's so much even more unbelievable stuff. Like it's just unbelievable stuff. So my body is recovering from that. And at the same time, as I was moving through it, I had to kind of hold steady. So I had to hold, like hold it together a little bit. I couldn't process everything. I did my best to process what I could, but I had to really hold steady in it. And now that we're kind of coming out the other side, I feel like there's a real like uh, decompression happening. And in that, I just, my body just needs some time because on a human level, it's kind of processing some of the stuff that's, that I didn't have time or I couldn't process when I was still in the muck of it all. 
in the in the battlefield of it all. So there's a time now of integration. And it's, it's easy to swing kind of one end of the pendulum. It's like, get me off this ride, I'm out of here. Like, I'm done, let me off. Let me off this thing called life. And then there's the other end of the pendulum where you're full on inside. You can't even, you don't even feel like you have a choice. You're just so wrapped up in it all. And then there's this other area in the middle. And that's kind of where I'm landing now is this place where I want to honor my humanness and my human emotions. And I don't want to bypass anything. So we're human beings having a human experience. And our divinity is the observer. So another way to say that is when you've heard this saying, I'm sure we're spiritual beings having a human experience. But I don't want to dishonor the human experience. It's important to learn how to embrace our humanness while we embody our divinity. So we can swing to this one end of the pendulum and, and recognize there's, we, we're these divine beings, we're, we're spiritual beings, and you know we can even go as far as to say none of this is real. But then we kind of get into this place of apathy the ego can hijack that and we get into this place of apathy. There's a reason that you're here in this human body, having this human experience as a divine being. There's a reason that you're here. There's a purpose. And the purpose is actually impacting and influencing your life directly your experience of your life classroom directly and it's influencing and impacting other people's lives the, the healing of the whole directly or indirectly whether you realize it or not so every action or non-action you take influences everyone everywhere all together all at once and everything they do influences you and everyone else So instead of removing ourselves fully, we need to kind of take that pendulum swing and go to the end of that swing and feel what it's like or experience our divinity. But then it's important to come back and recognize that there's this human experience that you signed up for and there's purpose in it. And instead of trying to get off the ride or finish the ride or get off sooner than later, arrive at your destination. It's, it's about experiencing and appreciating the journey. It's about feeling the emotions as in our human experience, as a human being. Feel it fully. Feel it wholly, fully, completely. And this is where we can actually, you know, kind of separate ourselves from hurt a little bit, separate ourselves from pain, separate, separate ourselves from having those more denser human emotions like sadness and grief, even anger. We could process anger in 15 seconds if we let ourselves. We can move through grief and sadness if we allow ourselves. When we judge it or restrict it or hold on to it, we actually keep it stuck longer so we can stretch it out longer. So the key becomes to meet ourselves and our humanness, to feel the sadness, to feel the grief, to feel the pang in your heart, to look upon what's going on in the world and, and know that on a human level, 
yeah, there's moments where it feels sad. And yes, there's moments where it feels devastating and hard to look at and hard to process. And it's okay that it feels hard sometimes. And it's okay that it might feel like it drags you down sometimes. But don't camp out there. Don't let the ego keep you there. Honor those human emotions. Move through them. Give them some space. Don't judge them. Be with them. Feel them fully. And then make a conscious choice for love. Ask for another perspective. Shift from fear to love. Recognize the calls for love all around you. And do what you can do to meet those calls with love. Because the truth is, we are actually afraid of fear. We're afraid of all the negative emotions, but they're a lot more familiar to us. And the truth is, we're actually, as a whole, generally speaking, more afraid of love. We're more afraid of love because we've been taught that love hurts. We've been taught that we can lose love. So it comes at a great risk, a big cost. But none of that is true. At the level of the mind, we believe it's true. But it's not truth with a capital T. Because we can't lose love. We can't lose ourselves with a capital S, self. We can lose ourself in the way of the world, our human self, our ego self, our persona, our personality, often animated with fear. We can have an experience of loss on a human scale. But the truth is, in our divinity, nothing can be lost. Because only love is real. So when we look at a choice for love, that might be, are you willing to feel love fully in your humanness? And yes, that might be or feel risky because you set yourself up for hurt or loss or grief in our humanness. But I don't want to bypass any of those emotions. I don't want to bypass my human experience. I don't need to get caught up in it. I don't need to camp out in those emotions. But I can certainly be willing to feel those emotions and let them wash. Let them move through and have their expression. See, we're here to actually enjoy the ride, to experience the ride of being human. We're not here to bypass it. We're not here to skip it. We're not here to take a detour and miss a whole big chunk of it. We're here to feel it fully, wholly, and completely. To embrace our humanness and allow ourselves to be in that experience and feel all the emotions that come along with it. And experience all the scale of emotions that come along with it. It's not just the harder, denser emotions. When's the last time you felt pure joy, happiness, without condition? When's the last time you felt 
that you could actually love without limits or love without condition or love without fear of hurt. When's the last time you swung your heart so wide open that love just came pouring through for you and for others? And I'm not asking you these questions to judge, but to simply create awareness to what capacity do you love? To what capacity can you receive love? To what capacity do you extend love? Where are your limits? Where are your judgments? Where are your fears? Where are your conditions surrounding love? And then tuning into the heart, surrendering all of that as you create awareness for giving it all to spirit and saying, guide me, lead me, direct me. I do not know how to do this. I do not know how to be human and love without limits. But I'm open to learning. I'm open to remembering. We have so much programming in our mind. So much programming. Our human minds are like one big filter for fear, full of fear, and it's a big filter of limitation. And when we remove those filters, layer by layer, piece by piece, we create this openness in the mind. And when we allow our heart to lead, when we allow the divine to take the lead, we tap into a knowing that bypasses in a positive way all the filters. It's not about knowledge in the head. It's about knowing in the heart. And that knowing has no filter. The love in the heart has no filter. Love in the mind has many filters, many definitions, many limitations, many conditions. We are conditioned to fear love. We are programmed to be afraid of love. The truth is love is, is our essence. Love is the source of who we all are. And I don't speak about love in the way of the human love. It's like love that, that you can't even capture it with the word love. The truth of who you are is bigger and greater than the experience of the word love. And when you tap into that, when you have a felt experience of living oneness, then that knowing can override any limitations or knowledge in the mind. That knowing, that felt experience can allow you to live life by divine. It shifts us into deep trust because we felt a deep knowing. I've had several experiences of living oneness and in those experiences, it's, it's hard to capture in words. And just as I'm speaking about it again, the feeling and the sensation and the experience of it is coming back in. And that is what I feel when I work with clients. And that is what I feel when I'm in alignment throughout my day. And any moment that I'm out of alignment with spirit and 
and a lot and kind of joining with ego, joining with fear. I feel the discord. And the good news is the more and more you're in alignment, the higher your sensitivity becomes to when you're out of alignment. It becomes harder to be out of alignment. It makes it it's so intense and so dense that it feels like you're just getting beat up right away. So the, that's the good news is you can't stay out of alignment for long. So even as I was going through this whole experience in the last six months, taking a stand against, while well, standing up for, for truth, which looked like me standing up against corruption, in that standing up in truth, it required a real unwavering faith. And in those moments where I would waver and align with fear, they were extremely painful and created an extreme amount of suffering. And that's the good news. So I don't want you feeling sorry for me because I had to go through some suffering. I couldn't stay there very long. I couldn't stay in that space very long. I had to get myself back into alignment. I was, it forced me to stay in alignment because it was way too painful not to be. So in those moments where I got caught up in the humanness of it and the story of it and the injustice of it, I had to find a way to bring myself back into alignment. And I called upon all of the tools in my tool belt. Over and over and over again. And every moment, I made a conscious choice for love. And when I would forget, I would forgive. And when I would remember, I would celebrate. And when I was challenged and I was wavering, I would lean on my mighty companions. Three in particular. And I tended to lean hard and lean hard on them. So in this experience, it was very humbling for me as well. Anytime you have a humbling experience, you know that the spiritual ego is somewhere in there. And I've done a lot, a lot of unwinding on my spiritual ego, but the ego is relentless. It's going to keep trying and evolving and shifting and finding a, an angle and finding a way to come in. Because it's desperate to keep you safe. It's desperate to protect you and keep you playing small. So I could feel it and sense it. Can't, couldn't always put my finger on it, but then it would kind of show up in those moments of humbling experiences. It'd show up in these moments where I would lean on others and they would show up with, with profound love and compassion. And there were a few times, you know, with my husband, he was, he was such a solid rock for the most part throughout this whole situation. And there were times where I literally like just broke down. And that the overwhelming human emotion of it all just came through like a volcano of emotion erupting. And he would hold steady and he would hold space for me. We all need those individuals. We all need those mighty companions in our lives. And maybe you can think of one person that as a mighty companion for you, or maybe you need to discover and be open to a mighty companion coming along. We all need 
those reminders. We all need those individuals in our lives that can meet us in our humanness, allow us to be in that human experience, hold space for us, but know, know that we are not those emotions. We are not that human experience. We are not that human behavior. We are divine beings. We are so much more than our humanness. But we don't want to discount our human experience. We want to honor it, embrace it, experience it, say yes to it. Don't get off the merry-go-round. Stay on it. Enjoy the ride. Savor the journey. And know that as you're doing that, there's a part you're meant to play. A part that you're meant to play for you, a part that you're meant to play for others. And everything you do or don't do, all action and non-action has impact. And the more you align with love, and the more you are love in action, the more you contribute and expand love in the world. That's what the world needs. More people making a choice, a conscious choice for love, a conscious choice to be love in action, a conscious choice to be fierce love when necessary, to stand solid, to stand solid in yes to love and to stand solid in the no, what you're doing is not okay. And that is a choice for love. And it's not always going to be well received. Stand in love anyways. Be love in action anyways. Not in an egotistical, cocky kind of way, just an unshakable, unwavering, love in action kind of way. That's what the world needs. That's what we all need. So the question then becomes, right here, right now, in this moment, are you choosing love or are you choosing fear? Are you standing in love and action? Or are you standing in the energy of a call for love? Neither is right nor wrong. Just creating awareness as to what is. And then making a conscious choice. There's nothing wrong with a call for love. But the moment you have an awareness that that's what you're doing or that's what you're witnessing from another is the moment that you could actually meet yourself or another person with love. So we have Valentine's Day coming up this week. I'm going to encourage you to be your own Valentine. Be that loving presence for yourself first. That loving, unconditional presence. Non-judgmental. All accepting. All embracing. Unconditional. Love without limits. And you wake up in the morning, look at yourself in the mirror and just say, I love you. No matter what happens today, I love you. Start with self-love. Be your own Valentine. Because our capacity to love others is determined by our capacity to love ourselves. 
when we increase our capacity to love ourselves, we actually increase our capacity to love others. And we believe that we can love others greater than ourselves, but that's not true. It's a projection of love that feels greater. So here, I'm going to give you this piece before we end. This is a big piece. So you may have to sit with this or listen to it again. The ego will project outward what it doesn't want us to receive ourselves. It can project anger, blame, shame. It can project negativity outward, but it can also project love. So when you have an experience that you love someone else greater than yourself, that's actually not true. The reason it feels like that is because the ego has taken your capacity to love self and projected it outward onto somebody else, making them more important than you or more special than you. And that capacity to love self or self-love is projected outward as a love for another person. That is not clean, pure love. But that is what makes loving another feel bigger than loving ourselves. The ego loves to use projection and keep us from experiencing what's meant to be for us, what we're meant to feel, whether that's feeling our own blame and shame and processing our own negative emotions, or whether that's feeling the love we have for ourselves, which in truth is our love for all, because we're all one. So I'm giving you a big lesson here in a very short time as a seed planted in your mind to try it on, to let it grow, let it expand, water it a little bit, shine some light on it here and there and see where it goes. For some of you, I've just kind of like did a kapow, mind-blowing aha moment. For others, you're going to be scratching your head going, hmm. And I don't quite understand that, but I'm curious about it. Remain curious. If we took back all of our projections, that would mean we need to take back all of our projection of love and give it back toward ourselves. That's when love can really expand genuinely, authentically within us. So this Valentine's Day, Bring back all the love that you've given others that is actually meant for you. And see if you can be your own Valentine. See if you can actually bring that love in and extend it towards yourself. See it expand and then feel it genuinely, authentically extend toward others without limiting it for you. So there's this overflow in your heart. Your heart is overflowing with love for you and for all. And that love extends from the overflow. So there is no sacrifice. It's filling up everyone, including you. It's extending toward everyone, including you. You deserve love far deeper and greater than you've experienced so far. Your capacity of love to love is, is a, you're scratching the surface still. And I would love for you to experience it in a, in a way that would leave a lasting imprint because you would remember the truth of who you are. You would remember that it's your true essence. You deserve more love than you know. And you are more worthy than you can ever imagine. I love you. I appreciate you. I honor you. I see you. Until next week. Love and blessings.
You've been listening to Life by Divine with your host, Sue DeMay. Shift your consciousness from head to heart and enliven your soul as you discover how to lead with your heart and live your own life by divine. Join Sue in the growing global heart-led living community at heartledliving.com. That is heartledliving.com.